Hey guys, it's Mr. Bison here. I'm continuing with every exam question that's ever been asked. I'm focusing on probability at the moment, and in particular, I'm going to focus on tree diagrams. This is a really, really popular topic, and then I'll finish off with a couple of videos on some of the more challenging kinds of ones that come up. Like I always say, if you do want to use this document, it's fully hyperlinked, and you can download it in the description from the link in the description. Okay, tree diagrams, very popular topic. Let's quickly read through what we've got here. It says there are 30 students in Mr. Lear's class, 16 are boys. Two of the students from the class are chosen at random. Mr. Lear draws the probability tree diagram for this information. The first thing it says, write down one thing that is wrong with the probabilities in the probability tree diagram. Well, something you should always look for is to check that each branch, branch adds to one. If you look in this branch and this branch here, they do not add to one. So I'm going to say the probabilities for the second, the probabilities in the branches for the second student do not add to one. The probabilities in the branches for second student do not add to one. And what I mean by that is 15 over 30 plus 14 over 30 is equal to 29 over 30, not 30 over 30. Then we've got some other bits. It says Owen and Wasim play for the school football team. The probability that Owen will score a goal in the next match is 0.4. The probability that Wasim will, sco will score a goal in the next match is 0.25. Mr Slater says the probability that both boys will score a goal in the next match is 0.4 plus 0.25. Is Mr Slater right? Give a reason for your answer. So because it's both boys, that's like um, Owen doing it and Wasim. When it is an and, it shouldn't be an add, it should be a multiply. So is he right? No, he is not right. The reason is uh, the probabilities should be multiplied. They should be multiplied, not added. Okay, let's see if we've got these ones. So one of the things wrong, the probabilities uh, for the second student do not add up to one, or we could have said that the denominator was incorrect, so that this one and this one should have been out of 29. And no, the evidence for this is that they should be multiplied together instead of added. Okay, Alan has two spinners, spinner A and spinner B. Each spinner can land on only red and white. We've got the probability that it is uh, red is 0.25 and that it will land on red for this one is 0.6. So that's what it's told us about. The probability tree diagram shows the information. Notice how these add to one, these add to one, and these add to one. Alan spins spinner A once and spins spinner B once. He does this a number of times. The number of times both spinners land on red is 24. Work out an estimate for the number of times that both spinners land on white. So first of all, the probability that both will land on red comes from these bits here. The probability would be 0.25 multiplied by 0.6. You always multiply as you go along the branches. So I'm just going to quickly check that on my calculator. I'm going to do my 0.25 multiplied by 0.6. So the probability is 0.15. Now, we don't know how many times that he does this. He just does it a number of times. If I call the number of times he does it n, we know that if he does 0 0.15 and he does that, multiplies that by the number of times that he does it, he gets 24 as his result. So we're going to find out how many times he does this overall. We'll do 24 divided by 0 0.15. 24 divided by 0 0.15. So the total number of times he does this is 160. So he's doing this experiment 160 times. Now we can read the question. Work out an estimate for the number of times both spinners land on white. So that would be this one and this one here. In other words, the 0 0.75 and the 0 0.4. So we're going to do 0 0.75 multiplied by 0 0.4 to find the probability that both of them are white. So 0 0.75, my calculator is misbehaving, 0 0.75 multiplied by 0 0.4, and we get 0 0.3. So we're then just going to take that probability of 0 0.3, we'll multiply it by the number of times that he's doing this, which is 160, and that will give us our answer. So we'll do 0 0.3 multiplied by 160, and that's going to give us an estimate of 48 times. We could have also done this in a different kind of way without even having to work out how many times there were in total, because if the probability of red and red was 0 0.15 and the probability of white and white was 0 0.3, we can see that the probability has doubled, which means it should double from 24 to 48 as well. 
it's twice as likely that it's going to be two whites, so there should be twice as many times. So you may not have needed to do this process, but it's there just in case you wanted to think of it in that way as well. So we've got 48 for this bit, um, and yeah, just pretty good from there. So this one says when a biased six-sided dice is thrown, the probability it will land on a four is 0 0.65. It's thrown twice, Amir draws the probability tree diagram, and it is not correct. So I'm going to show you things that I think are not correct. They've told us the probability it will land on a four is 0 0.65. So that one's correct, that one's correct. This one here is not correct. So I'm going to just write that down. One of the things that is wrong is the second throw incorrectly says that it is 0.35 on the top branch. Now we're going to try and find out the second one. Remember what I said, they always need to add to 1. They add to 1, they add to 1. This one down here is incorrect. So I'm going to say the uh, probability on the bottom first branch, bottom first branch is 0 0.25, but it should be 0 0.35. So that they add up to one. Okay, let's see if we've got these. Uh, we have said here that the probability should be a total of one, so 0 0.25 should be 0 0.35, and we've got this bit here as well. Okay, Dart's team is going to play a match on Saturday and on Sunday. The probability that the team will win on Saturday is 0 0.45. I think immediately what I'm going to want to do is find out the probability that they do not win. And to make them add to 1, we get 0 0.55. If they win on Saturday, so we're talking about this bit up here, the probability that they will win again on Sunday is 0 0.67. So I'm going to fill that 0 0.67. And I could do 1 minus this, but that's going to be 0 0.33. If they do not win on Saturday, the probability that they will win on Sunday is 0 0.35. So this is not winning on Saturday. The probability that they will win on Sunday is 0 0.35. Probably because if they did well on Saturday night, then they're more likely to do well on Sunday. And if they didn't do well on Saturday, they are less likely to win on Sunday, maybe because of morale or psychology. So then we're just going to finish this part of this. And it says the probability they do not win, well, 1 minus 0 0.35 is 0 0.65. Find... The part B says, find the probability that the team will win exactly one of the two matches. So we just need to think about the two ways they could do that. They could win on Saturday, and then they could not win on Sunday. So we're going to do 0 0.35, uh, 0 0.45 and 0 0.33. So it's going to be a 0 0.45 multiplied by 0 0.33. We'll work that out in a second. And then the other way that they could do this is they could lose on the Saturday and then they could win on the Sunday. So that's a 0 0.55 and a 0 0.35. 0 0.55 and 0 0.35. We're going to get those two probabilities, and we will add those ones together, because we don't mind if either of those options, it's not both of them happening at the same time, it's just one of them. So 0 0.45 times 0 0.33, that's 0 0.4185, 0 0.1485, sorry. And then if I do my second one, which is 0 0.55 times 0 0.35, we get 0.1925. So when I add these together, that's my 0.1485 plus 0.1925. That will give us our probability. Now I've already got that 0.125 stored in my calculator, so I'm just going to do 0.1485 plus the answer, and we get 0.341. That's the probability of winning on either of those matches. There's our 0.341, and these are our probabilities that we had in the tree diagram. Okay, so then this one says May travels to work by train every day. The probability that her train will be late on any day is 0 0.15. So immediately I want to put all of these are going to be 0 0.15 because it says on any day. And 1 minus 0 0.15, you can check on your calculator, that is 0 0.85. So all of these branches have to be 0 0.85. A very easy two marks, I think, there. Work out the probability that her train will be late on at least one of these two days. Well, you could do this. You could do a long method. You could say on at least one of the days. She could be therefore late on both days. She could be late on one day and not the other day. She could be not late on one day and late on the other day. In other words, you're going to have to work out these two probabilities multiplied, these two probabilities multiplied, these two probabilities multiplied, and then add up all of those 
Or the alternative to this is you could just work out the probability that she's not late on either of the days and do 1 minus that probability. So I'm going to do that one because I just think it's quicker. I'm going to do 1 minus 0.85 times 0.85 because this is all of the probabilities and if I take away this yellow branch that I've got here I will be left with all of the blue branches. Now if you didn't like that you could do the longer method multiply those multiply those multiply by those and add them all together but I'm going to do this 1 minus 0.85 times 0.85 obviously bid mass knows I'm doing those bits multiplied and we get 0.2775 Okay, we'll just double check part B. I know part A is correct from the way we filled it in, but there we've got that bit here. And these are the correct things that we need for the diagram. So you could have done this longer method if you wanted to. Here's the shorter method that we've done. Okay, this one, it says the property tree diagram shows the probabilities that Bismo will be late for work on two days next week. And you'll see the probabilities change for the next bit. Calculate the probability that Bismo will be late on exactly one of the two days. So that means being late on Monday, but then not late on Tuesday. So I'm going to start off with doing those probabilities. My second ones are going to be not late on Monday, but then they would have to be late on Tuesday. So to do this as one single calculation, it's going to be 0 0.07 multiplied by 0 0.98. And I'm going to add on to that the 0 0.93 multiplied by 0 0.11. And that is all of the probabilities in total. So 0 0.07 times 0 0.98 plus 0 0.93 multiplied by 0.11 and we get 0 0.1709 0 0.1709 yep there's the correct answer for this one and we're going to go on to our last question on these tree diagrams which is this one here it says amanda has two fair three-sided spinners amanda spins each spinner once complete the probability tree diagram so they're all about landing on two well the probability that it lands on two is going to be one out of three and not a two is two out of three so landing on a 2 is 1 out of 3, 2 out of 3, 1 out of 3, and 2 out of 3. Work out the probability that spinner A lands on 2 and spinner B does not land on 2. So spinner A is going to land on 2 and spinner B does not land on 2. So we're going to do 1 third multiplied by 2 thirds, a very easy part B of this question. 1 third times by 2 thirds, I'm not even going to use the calculator, 1 times 2 is 2 and 3 times 3 is 9, so we're looking for the answer two ninths so we've definitely got that bit filled in correctly and we've also got the two ninths there okay the next bit is going to be where i'm going to do similar things to tree diagrams but i'm going to try and do them without actually drawing the probability trees that go with them so come back for that video and do make sure that you're getting um, all of the stuff you can from these making sure you're getting as much revision as you can done for your exams